Um, this has been uh, a really stimulating day. Um, it's very difficult now to follow because there's nothing new that I can add that hasn't been said and probably said more eloquently than I can uh, now. But I really want to try to encapsulate what we, transparency, needs to do. We've heard all the problems, the broken institutions, all the um, trials and tribulations that the country faces. But what do we do? Thank you for your participation today. And we've had a stimulating day, beginning with the plaintive appeal of young Chesi Casimir. I think we should not forget that, because that is what gives us hope that there's a future for Trinidad and Tobago. And we owe it to people like Chesi, all her friends, all her peers, all the people in that club that she said she was going to start. We owe it to them to give them a Trinidad and Tobago to live in that we would be proud of. And we would be proud to know that they're inheriting our patrimony, not just our resources, but knowing right from wrong. All of the presentations, and I can't thank enough the presenters we had, you've surpassed our expectations. And you've galvanized us into clear and decisive action for the future. And that is what I think my theme is, is going to be about leadership by example. Leadership by example because we need to lead. We the people need to lead. Whether you want to call a civil society or something else, we need to lead. Principled leadership, whatever we're calling the leadership, leadership with integrity, it's based on morals and values that we know, whether they're enshrined in law or not. Wes's mother told her, Winston Rudder's mother told him, etc., etc. We all know, whatever persuasion we are, religious or otherwise, we know what is right from wrong. And that is what we must do. Do. Over the years, the nation has been provided with enough things for detractors to ridicule us, internally and internationally. We are increasingly observed to be suffering from the effects of growing levels of crime and corruption. Our health care, public transport, education facilities are inadequate. We've heard the major institutions, police, judiciary, etc., are being undermined. We run the risk of losing the soul of the nation. The price of oil is falling, gas. Our agriculture sector is stagnant as is our manufacturing sector. Our economy is faltering. It's time for action. Our leadership. As a developing country, and let us not believe the illusion created by a flattering per capita income, we are a developing country. And our goal must be to work for sustainable development. What are our prospects? We need to attract investment. The global economy is such that resources are at a premium and there's competition for those resources. We need to establish a strong reputation for responsible management of resources if we are to attract significant investment. EITI is but one example. It is generally accepted, and Dion showed a, a slide showing it, that on average, corruption accounts for some 25% of major pro project costs. 25% of those projects finds its way into private pockets, thus depriving the average citizen of 25% of our po potential resources. Another school, another hospital, we have no choice. We have to eliminate corruption. 
Yes, we need strong legislation. We also need strong institutions to enforce the legislation. We need strong leaders to sustain the institutions. And who are some of these leaders? One obvious leader is the government, but we also need a strong opposition. And above all, though, is we need political leaders to act with integrity. But in a sense, essence, it is we the people who must lead. We must demand integrity and accountability from the political leaders. Business and corporate entities must demand a clean environment in which they can up operate efficiently. Private sector business must demand a comprehensive set of rules and regulations that enable a fair and competitive regime. This in turn requires the strong judiciary and legal system to enforce those rules and regulations, requiring a strong and respected collective of protective services. But who guards the guards? We the people. Based on our moral and spiritual values, we need to be the conscience of the nation. We need to be the leaders. We need to be the ones to do to demand what is proper governance. We are being called to lead by example. And we the people are all here today represented as whatever you want to call a civil society. And I am committing on behalf of the Trinidad and Tobago Transparency Institute that we will lead. We will collaborate with all of you with the rest of civil society to lead, to demand, and to ensure that we fulfill our mandate to work, and I quote our mission, to work towards a country and a region that are free of corruption. Transparency is the national chapter of Transparency International, and we share Transparency International's vision of a world in which government, politics, business, civil society, and the daily lives of people are free of corruption. Great noble words, lovely words. Now we have to turn those ambitions into reality as individuals and collectively. Transparency is ways to promote good governance in both the public and private sectors. But also we, civil society, must practice good governance and thus we must lead by example. Transparency is ways to work in a non-confrontational way with governments, the private sector, development agencies, NGOs, international organizations to combat corruption. We pause here to thank the British Council for their partnership today, and we hope that that will develop as to a stronger relationship. But we must also engage the widest range of civil society organizations to pursue our common goals. Sterling Bellgrove reminded us that there are 8,000 registered organizations. If we take on average each of those are small organizations and allowing from some overlap, that could be 800,000 people belong to civil society organizations. That's all the adult population in Trinidad and Tobago. And we're not only interested in the adults, we're interested in the young people the Chessies, our youth group, the youth arm that we have budding in transparency. But all the other organizations who are here, the network of NGOs, the Trinidad and Tobago Chamber of Commerce, Repsol, Caribbean Airlines, Canadian High Commission, the Association of Certified and Chartered Accountants, the Rose Foundation, the British High Commission, Rasta Advertising, Visual Arts, the Hilton Trinidad, all who helped us and continue to help us with our goals and ambitions. So we need to engage them. And between us all, we have the resources to form the club that Chesi talked about. And this club must now become the leaders of our society. And we must do what we practice, what we preach, and we must practice what we know to be right. Yes, we want to enhance legislation, election campaign financing, political party funding and regulation, whistleblower protection, 
anti-corruption legislation, the laws that Dion talked about in Norway to compel declaration of beneficial interest. We want all of that. But we can't have that, oh sorry, we can have it on paper like we have procurement legislation. Some nice words on a piece of paper, but nothing to give it substance to make it work. Is it because we really don't want it to work? But that is up to us, the people, whose 25% of our money is going on all these projects that we are avoiding having proper legislation for. So we don't only need the legislation, we need the infrastructure that will make it work. Procurement legislation, and Afra said we want it in six months' time. That's too long. It took 14 years for Boyd and Victor and people like that to start those conversations to get to where we are today with a piece of paper. So we need the accompanying regulations. We need a handbook to tell civil servants how to act. But we need the establishment of the office of the regulator with the requisite resources to make it operational and the reporting structure that allows it to be independent. And we need the public education programs that are necessary to let the entire population know what to expect and what they should have. And that leadership, or that awareness has to come from in here. As we approach another general election, transparency is also teamed with a range of like-minded organizations to bring to reality Archbishop Harris's initiative of a code of ethical political conduct and which I'm pleased to say all the main political parties have signed. We will now put it to the test as to whether our politicians can abide by voluntary strictures and regulate themselves in order to conduct a clean campaign. We civil society must demand that clean campaign so that we the people can exercise our franchise based on real choices of policy, philosophy, and issues, and not lapse into the jargon and say, you know, we choose NOTA. NOTA is not a choice. It's not none of the above. It's apathy. We can't be bothered to make a choice, but we must, because we want to be able to demand of the people that we choose to lead us that they must lead us in the proper way. I am an eternal optimist. You know, I still believe that West Indies cricket will improve. <laughs> and so West Hall galvanized us this morning, I think, and, and started off the day, but that's thanks to Jason because Wes did say that it depended on how Jason um, was as an MC that would inspire him, and, and he was, um, so that we will improve. So I know that Trinidad and Tobago will achieve the goal of eradic eradicating corruption, and I have examples that I want to use to motivate us. In 1962, we became independent. As a wrong, so did another country on the other side of the world, Singapore. At that time, a most corrupt country. Their leader, one man, Lee Kuan Yew, succeeded, or not single-handedly, but in transforming his country. And that country now maintains a sustained, consistent position at the top of TI's Corruption Perception Index. So it can happen. And I just want to talk about the CPI for one minute. Those who are not happy with the score that your country gets finds all sorts of obscure reasons why it is not a scientific measurement, why it is not good. You know, it, it, it's, you know who cares what score? Trinidad and Tobago 
as every other country, the 176 countries get a score. And I was at a school recently, well, more than one school, and they said similar things. And I asked them, if you were scoring tests, whatever, on a scale of 0 to 100, where 100 is the best zero, no, roughly what's a pass mark? 50. We kind of settled around. Trinidad and Tobago, on the CPI, scores 38. They all agree that was failure. But do you know the disturbing thing? When I told them that 38 was Trinidad and Tobago's score, they said, so high? <laughs> and that is frightening. Because where the detractors say it's not a scientific mark, it's not properly done, who did the test, who, those people in Berlin don't know what they're happening in Trinidad, etc. But the kids tell you that 38 is too high. So let us be realistic. We need to change that. There were recent state elections in, in India last year where breakaway anti-corruption civil society party in the state of Uttar Pradesh won 67 out of 70 seats. Now it's still too early to tell whether that's sustainable or meaningful, but it is inspiring. If on the basis of anti-corruption you can take over a state, then maybe there is hope, and we can do it. Maybe when we go out in the public and we talk about corruption and anti-corruption, Maybe we are misusing terms. Because again, the young people, the people in Separia, the people in Mayaro, when we go to these community meetings and you talk corruption, they glaze over. Because that's something that happens you know, in, in Parliament, it happens somewhere else, it's big business. That has nothing to do with me. So maybe we need to stop talking anti-corruption and say we want to eliminate the theft of our money in our country. So don't worry about corruption. We don't want people to steal our money from us. And maybe that will also galvanize the population. But I know that we can improve. We can climb the CPI ladder. And I am confident that if we come together as collective civil society organizations, as individuals working for the same goal that we can improve with leadership, by example, our example. And with your collaboration, with God's help, we will succeed in restoring the soul of our nation. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>